In the next video segment, dealing with SCAM brakes, I want to go over things to either uh, inspect, repair, replace uh, while doing a brake job. Now, high mileage brake jobs, you're going to be putting lining on, and it makes sense to put a parts kit in. So what you get in a typical parts kit are new springs, both return and retaining springs. That's what we see here. You're going to get anchor pins and bushings. They're always replaced as a set. Okay. Some of them will have snap rings. Some of them will have a step down uh, end to them. But they always get replaced as a set. You'll get some spacers. Maybe not enough to do the job, but to get you started, you can always use old spacers again as long as they're not uh, bent or rusted. New clips for on the uh, rollers. They are always bent, so you always want to change them out. You get a new snap ring for the end of your S-cam. Return spring uh, pins. Sometimes they could be used from the old shoes, but some guys forget to drive them out and save them before they turn the old shoes in for a core. So they'll give you a set with them. And it's always best to use the new ones if you have it. The roller. Here's the step-down rollers I was talking about. These get replaced. They tend to have flat spots on them. And that's about all the items we have in there. There's some duplicates, but um, whenever possible, that's the minimum you're going to put in. Now, you're also going to be checking S-cam bushings, uh, the uh, radial and axial play. And if it's out of spec for the radial, you're going to put new bushings in, and you may have to uh, replace an S-cam. So we'll start with the S-cam. First off, without even taking it out, you can inspect the head. This one has flat spot, worn area, okay. a little bit of rust that can be cleaned off, but those flat spots, those worn areas can't be fixed. They need to be replaced. On the other end of it, when you get it apart, you're going to inspect the splines. Anywhere in the splines is lost motion between that slack adjuster and that S-cam. The groove for the snap ring needs to be crisp, sharp, so that it's held in place, it's not going to slip out. And then lastly, another reason this one failed is because where the bushings ride, it's worn. It's heavily worn. Okay? That's what gives us the excess radial play need for a replacement of the S-cam. And with S-cams then, comes bushings. You're putting an S-cam in, you're putting new bushings in. That'll get us to the minimum uh, radial play. They're usually made of nylon, like you see here. And believe it or not, these are hard. Uh, when you compare it against steel, the steel wears as much as the uh, the bushing, the nylon bushing. So we we'll always replace them. Take a bushing driver, knock them out. Usually you have to knock from one side to the other, so knock them both out. And uh, with that said, there's also seals, and they always get replaced. You're popping them out, even if you're not changing the bushings and the S cams. But the S cam got clean, taken out and cleaned. You're going to put new seals in because they do have a tendency to wear. These are a little bit different when they go in. The lip, which typically faces the fluid or the grease, in this case grease, would face in. So it will be true if on the S-cam head, the lip will face towards the, uh, uh, the spline end of the S-cam. But on the other side, where it's between the uh, cam bracket and the slack adjuster, the lip will face out towards the slack adjuster because that will be where our grease purges. So the seals, when they're installed, they're both in the same direction. This is one place where you're allowed to put a seal in backwards or don't follow the normal rule. Otherwise, it won't work properly. Can't purge that grease. Now, we had mentioned spacers. Should you get a couple new ones with the kit? Save the old ones. But uh, check to see if there's some uneven wear there. It could be something that's been. And if they're damaged, rusted, always replace them. Whatever the spec is for end play, if it's, let's say it's 30,000, it's typical on some uh, uh, S-cams, if it's greater than that, you can add shims until you get it under that 30,000 maximum. But you always want a few thousands minimum so there's no binding. <clears throat> Snap rings, like on the end of the S-cam, always get replaced. But you'll see that this one's brand new. It's nice. It's really close together on this external snap ring. A lot of times after use, they get spread. They don't hold the proper tension, and then they can, uh, they can pop out, come off. Springs, like we have here, 
return spring, retaining springs, they look pretty good. They still even have some paint on them. But you don't know the condition of them. You don't know what tension is left in them. Remember, we generate a lot of heat on this wheel end when we're braking and stopping a vehicle. Heat will affect the, the tension of the springs. They become weak over time. Even though they may look good, they should always be replaced. As we saw in the kit here. The rollers. I have two types of rollers. Double web roller here. And there's a flat spot right there. Really easy to see once they're cleaned up. Flat spot, can't use it. Uh, if it's anything but perfect, don't use it. Remember, when we go together, we're going to be putting a little bit of a uh, anti-seize or grease right on the edge here so that this thing can roll, but nothing ever on the face where it rides against the s cam head. The second roller is for a single web shoe. And same thing, we're looking to make sure there's no flat spots. Not sure how well you can see that, but it has uh, two very nice flat spots on there. Prevent, that will prevent that from rolling or doing its job. There's also rust on there, and that might be the first thing that started that thing, preventing it from rolling or, or uh, spinning like it was supposed to. So you want to clean that up if there's no flat spots on it and you had to reuse it. Lastly, we have clevises and pins. We'll start first with the clevis. This one is a double pin clevis for an automatic slack adjuster like we saw on this Meritor. The old style had an adjuster in here and if it's even somewhat loose or any play in there it will be replaced with a new one and the new style does not have that that built-in nut it has a jam nut but it's separate what you want to look for on these clevises is anywhere in the holes where the pins go this one here is slightly worn we put the pin in there and I can move that front to back 16th of an inch once again, lost motion when we're braking. <clears throat> the pins themselves, as you see here, this one has a very large, warm, stepped areas on the pins. Should be perfectly smooth, same diameter all the way end to end, with the exception of the head, and uh, cannot be reused. You, actually, on the back side, it's even worn in the center, but on a little bit of an angle. So, so we had a little bit of an alignment issue there. We have to address on that one, but. Once again, we'd have to replace that lost motion. The small pin, even on the automatic slack, this one's worn really bad. And cotter pins, which I don't have any here, but these things are held in or retained with cotter pins, always replace the cotter pins, never reuse them. Okay. So that takes care of any kind of inspection. Uh, next section we'll cover is the uh, uh, re reinstallation or rebuilding of this uh, wheel end.